I, I always tell my favorite right story about the little girl in a rural school in Liberia who, when visited by a UNESCO official, and who met them jostling in the yard, young girls, young boys, you know, sort of fighting, and, and the principal came out and admonished them, and then particularly admonished the little girl and said, you know, little girls shouldn't be fighting. Uh, you're a girl. And, and so she stood, and then she turned to him and said, uh, principal, don't forget, a woman is president. I think women are, are prepared just like men, you know, uh, to run, to compete, to win. Uh, the, the myth that uh, women don't support women and, and women can't take the hard knocks and all of that, those are, those are all things of the past. And I believe in, in the next decade, uh, my loneliness will cease. <laughs> As I hope to see two or three other women presidents in Africa. So I think the challenge for us women is learning to make, not to fit in all the time. To make sure that we don't fit into the paradigm. We don't even shift the paradigm, we recreate what the paradigm has to be. And I think that Mama President, I love that. I think that that's what she has done for us as women in Africa recreating the paradigm, having a woman in a country that was at war stand up and saying that I'm going to fight an election and I'm going to win it. That's recreating a paradigm. I'm humbled by the fact that I like to think I represent the aspirations and the expectations of women in Liberia, in Africa, I dare say the world, that carries with it an awesome responsibility As I go along this road trying to renew our nation and reconstruct our economy, what I do will have a great impact, great influence on the role that women will play in the future in their countries, in our continent. I'm glad to be here. What inspired me is that if she can do it, what, what, what is that that will pull me back for not doing it? She's an inspiration, and she's my first step that if she can do it, anything is possible for me. We need to recognize that as women, we need to cross the divides of race in this country. We are redefined by race in this country in an unacceptable manner. Women have far more in common than we have that divides us. We need to cross the divides of poverty. Our country is a country with enormous number of poor people in a rich country. We are not a poor country with rich people. We are a rich country with a lot of poor people. When PEE was written, there was no cardinal rule that said women shouldn't participate. And therefore, there's no reason why we haven't seen the emergence of key black women, or, or even uh, 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 or white women for that matter you know, that haven't come through the system. For me, if you, I had to actually look at PEE uh, critically, and I've said this before, is that when it comes to 2014 and beyond, and we look at the results of, of what PEE uh, has achieved, is that we will not have achieved anything except white economic empowerment. And that's really the, the crux of it for me. It's, it's, it's not whether it's gender-based or not. You're not going to get anywhere in this country until you've got proper freedom. And proper freedom means Freedom from poverty for everybody and for all people and, and literacy for everybody. <laughs>
Patrick is a very dif- difficult uh, social construct to, 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 to deal with. You know, when you're dealing with apartheid, it's quite clear that apartheid is a crime against humanity. It's not fair. It discriminates people on the basis of race. So it's much more easy. It's, it's, it's open. But Patrick was socialized into it. You stay with a husband also who also was socialized differently. You want to do it by example in the house that your girls have to understand that they're not victims uh, by not being a victim yourself without causing a, a major rupture in the house. So you have to manage the father of the house to make sure that your girls know that they have to stand up for their rights. And you do it in such a way that he still retains his dignity. You don't shout at him to say, don't do this to me. Uh, I'm not your, your scabby or other things. But you do it in a way which maintains the dignity of the house but does send the message home. So you, you even struggle in the house. As young women, we have aspirations in our careers. We have aspirations as entrepreneurs, grappling with motherhood, being a good wife, being a good makoti, being a good member of your community. There was a time when societies believed that women cannot survive business, cannot uh, contribute to business, they should stay at home. Forgetting that managing a household and its resources to have supported some of us um, to come and be CEOs um, by our mothers is because they could manage their households. And now we're saying that the opportunity is for us to add value as women. It is not to say um, men can never um, come up with very sustainable um, businesses that not look beyond just finances. And you've got to work hard. And don't think that working for two hours is hard. You've got to work hard. No less than six hours a day you've got to spend studying and polishing up and going back and looking at the problem from a different side. And, and then read. Read, read, read. Read yourself to sleep every day. And read all different kinds yes. of things. Yes. You see? We only want the best. So when you see people like those singing, you ask yourself, they get there. And you'll find it's the same thing. Hard work, you do well, but you do better and better and better. You're never satisfied that what you're doing is the, is the ultimate that you can do. Thank you. My mom taught me something that I'll never forget. As much as she's not educated, she usually say that if you do something, do it your best abilities so that when you're gone, they will realize that so and so was here doing this. But also, she taught me that. Whatever you do, don't mind what people say. As long as you are doing what you think is right for you, and that makes you happy. Whatever they say, is their own business, but you've got to do what you really, really like and what you are passionate about. How do we begin to rethink the way we speak to each other, the way we speak about each other, the way we speak to our children, to our nations, And I'm not just talking about just language in a home. I'm talking about how we talk about being against something as against being for something. Re-languaging, as I tend to refer to it. We talk about crime, but when are we going to begin to talk about being for safety, security, and protection of our communities instead of being against crime? When are we going to start talking about, instead of talking about fighting poverty, when are we going to talk about wealth creation, you know, things like that. When do we begin to change the way we, even even the way we think? The challenges we have is exactly that, how do we rebuild this? That anchor, which is our family, and the values, and then you link them with the church, you link them with the values of the constitutions, of human rights, of everything, but sitting there in the anchor of the family. I think hard work does pay off, um, and I've worked hard my whole life. I cannot, I cannot deny the fact that there's a certain basic um, lottery one wins through being born a certain way and being born with a certain type of parents that support and recognize your talent early on and egg you on. Um, I certainly grew up in an environment where at no stage was I told that girls can't do X and can't do Y. It was a 
total revelation to find that out much later in life. So, so I grew up in a in a, a way that told me that the sky was a limit. And I think that's a very important lesson to learn very, very early on, because then you don't place blocks and obstacles in your own way. <laughs> when people think gender, they think women. They do not think of gender as the relationships of power between men and women. For as long as men feel disempowered, particularly black men, in a society where men rule the roost, and you as a black man had to be kicked by a young white person because they were white, the damage to the self-image of black men is something that those dealing with gender who ignore it do so at their peril. The, 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 the clamor for, for, for roles of power with all the, the materialism that it, now today it, it, it is associated with, the corruption that it is associated with, all of these issues now have unfortunately in our country redefined what leadership is about, even at the level of women. Nobody talked about it as a concept. It was a way of life. And it was that concept of Ubuntu that also kept us going. It wasn't said. It was the values that we were able to retain from our parents, the values of family. We are 54% in this country. Women, I mean, we can determine the type of government we want. And yet we do not do so because we always take the back seat as women. I am calling upon you as South Africans, I'm calling upon you as the top business women in this country and the top brains of this country to think of what government we are going to have in 2009. That is the most important thing for you to do. Amansa! Amansa!